In this tutorial, we're going to cover user shapes. Now, user shapes are a shape that a, a person can place, and they can they can create different items out of it. So, in this design, I'm going to place two user shapes for the design itself. I have a raised bar back here, and I'll use a countertop for that. That'll be a user shape. That would be the appropriate way to to build that countertop. Then I'm going to do a floor to or a countertop to ceiling backsplash over here that I will use a uh, user shape for. And uh, then there's lots of other things you can use user shapes for as well. Um, if you spent much time looking at the designs on our website, you notice some of those designs have things in them like glass shower doors, um, water in tubs, and water in sinks. Um, those items were made using user shapes. So there's a lot of things you can do with user shapes. Now, user shapes can be found in your architectural elements catalog. Um, there's also a shortcut to find them. I don't like to have to change catalogs to come find my user shapes. I want to keep my cabinet catalog open typically when I'm using user shapes. So the shortcut to finding user shapes is under windows or doors. If you select that, you'll notice the first option up here is user shapes. And we've got floor user shape and wall user shape. Now the difference between a floor user shape and a wall user shape is floor user shape you can drag and drop out on the floor. A wall user shape it must place against a wall. So I'll place that one for us here in a moment. Now our floor user shape you just drag and dra drag and drop it out here just like any cabinet. I'm going to go to attributes and I'm going to set it for my countertop here. So I want the countertop to be about 103 long. I want it to be 18 inches wide. I want it to be an inch and a half thick. And now we also have to set a texture for it, so we might as well do that while we're in this tab. And our texture options are select wood. This will match the, um, well, this will select wood. We can select from any of our woods in our, in our thing over here, our library. We can select non-wood. This is going to give you um, laminate colors, granite colors, uh, wood colors like your floorings. It's going to give you colors like paints and metals. So there's a lot of fun colors you can select from in non-wood. Match catalog. This is going to match, um, in this case, a sample catalog because that's the catalog I've designed out of. It's going to match whatever I set in globals for the cabinet. So if I set globals to be um, have a wood species for the cabinet of oak um, honey, say, then it's going to match, my texture here is going to match on the oak. And as countertop, whatever we choose to place as our countertop, we'll place as our countertop there as well. We're going to select a non-wood. Whoops, do that every time. Select non-wood, you have to push the select button or it just takes you all away. And I'm going to set this granite on it. I'm going to click OK. And now I'm going to right click on it, I'm going to go to move. And I'm going to do a single left click out here on my design. It's going to attach my item to my mouse so I can see where it's at in real time. And I'm just going to drag it out here and line it up. And another right click places it. And I want to edit it just a little bit because I don't want these square corners sticking out there. Oh, one thing we haven't done yet is remember it is a floor user shape, so we need to up down it. Right now it's sitting on the floor. I want to set 40.5 inches above the floor. So there we go. And now we can go to edit. And from here it's going to edit just like a countertop. So if I want to bevel my corners, I can bevel my corners. There we go. I've got a couple nice beveled corners out there. And to get out of the uh, edit mode, just like countertop, you can hit the select button or you can hit escape on your keyboard. I'm just going to scroll down. Now let's place our wall user shape. <clears throat> so we're, we can drag this guy and drop it right out here, but if I do that, it's going to drop it behind one of these cabinets and I'm not going to be able to find it. So what I want to do is build an elevation for that wall. I've already got one built up here. Zoom out just a little bit on this elevation so I can see what's going on. There we go. 
have a drunk mouse today. All right, wall user shape. We're just going to drag this guy. And we're going to drop it right out here, and then we can move it around to wherever we want. I'm going to leave it right about there, and I am going to zoom in just a little bit. We're going to right click. We're going to go to edit. We're going to choose the right item first. Then we're going to go to edit. There we go. And again, it is just like countertops. So just click and drag the sides out here to the width we want. Same with this guy. Scroll up a little bit because I want them to go all the way to the ceiling. There we go. Now escape or select button. And again, we have to set our texture to it. So attributes, texture. I'm going to select a non-wood. And I'm going to come down here. We're going to set something a little different. Let's do a stone. Uh, we'll do a cut stone. And let's see what we got here. Let's do something along the lines of eh, cut stone number 14 looks good. Okay, so there's our two user shapes. Let's close this out, create a 3D, and see what they look like. And so here's our 3D. So we got a nice backsplash there. As we rotate a little bit, that wall will come back into play. We'll have a nice overhang there. Zoom out a little bit. So there we go. That looks pretty good. Now let's go back. We're just going to play with user shapes just a little bit to see some of the other things that we can do with them. So I'm going to close that off. I'm going to use floor user shapes for most of these because, again, the wall user shape is stuck up there on the wall. It tends to be kind of worthless sometimes unless you're just using something on the wall. Um, we want to go to, in this case, I'm going to edit it first. I'm going to go to round, make that 12. Whoops, what did that do? Escape, I screwed something up. All right. Round, edit. Round, 12, there we go. Round. There we go, there we've got a nice circle. Now let's do some attributes to this guy. Let's make it, come on, 96 inches tall. Let's put a texture on here. Um, select a non-wood. Hey, did you see that? I hit the select button this time instead. Uh, <laughs> let's do... Uh, let's just make this one. That'll work. That's an ugly color. Oh, well, that'll work. Ugly or not, it'll work. Okay, and let's do another one out here. And this one, I'm going to do it on this side of the kitchen, keep them separated. And let's do attributes. Let's make it one. Six. I go in the right direction. Nope. Thirty-six. One. Sometimes I gotta think about it. And let's make it just eighty-four. Texture. Select a non-wood. Paint. Palette blue. We'll take like this guy. There we go. And now I'm going to change the transparency on this thing. I'm going to set the transparency at 75%. Now we might need to go a little higher with that dark of a color. There we go. Okay. Now let's take a 3D. See what we. Okay. Here we've got a column over here on this side. See, we did a nice round column. And over here, this is how you create glass for a shower door or whatever you want. I, we've done some really cool glass countertops with them. Just changing that transparency allows you to see through it. So I set it at 
oh probably about 80 percent I could have kept it a little bit more probably 75 might have been good give it a little harder to see through um, but that's how we do some of those fun things so there you have it that is user shapes um, lots of great things you can do with your user shapes so be creative have fun find things that you can do with them and if you come up with something really super creative let us know we're always we're always looking forward to seeing some of the fun things that our users come up with so that is user shapes enjoy them thank you